You know what? So great about a country club coat room. Mm. Big, fluffy coat. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you get to hang up your pants, which you like. <laughs> you believe how that teensy manhot went on about her son becoming a judge? For heaven's sakes, it's traffic court. That doesn't look like the coat check girl's here. Edward, are you listening to me? Oh, yes, the ballet was rude, the duck was cold, and damn that teensy man. Oh, sorry. You are Kitty. Oh, Teensy, darling. Uh, did I congratulate you on your son's appointment? Oh. Oh, thank you. I'll extend your best wishes to his honor. <laughs> and congratulations to you, Women's Club Humanitarian of the Year. Oh, not until Saturday. Anyone here? I'm glad I caught you. I have the most wonderful news. <laughs> Monday, we're having the groundbreaking ceremony for the little Greek theater I'm building for our drama guild. Oh, well. Bravo! Monday, is it? Yes, I hope you can come. My son is going to preside. Oh, well, he should keep them from speeding through the ceremony. <laughs> Kitty, good one. <laughs> Ta-ta. Break your leg. <laughs> oh, she's only holding that groundbreaking ceremony on Monday to steal the thunder from my event on Saturday. Edward, get the coats, find the children. I want to leave now. Well, I'll have to get them myself. Oh, I had a hat. Thank you. Edward, watch your speed. Last thing I need is for you to be hauled up in front of the Honorable Skippy Manhart. You know, Kitty, it could just be a coincidence that Teensy is having her dealie the same week as your dealie. How do you know about her dealie? Just talk, people talk. Craig and I were in the coat room having sex. That, that could have been where we heard it. This is our country club. Have you two no sense of decorum? Greg kept his tie on. In any event, I have no intention of attending Teensy's ceremony. Yeah, you know, Kitty, you really should go. It's a nice thing. She's building a theater. Oh, yes, yeah, so self-indulgent rich women can put on bad productions of Medea. They should do Pippin. I've never seen a bad production of Pippin. Kitty, be the bigger person here, huh? Oh, I don't know. It's way out of town. It's a terrible drive. And Edward will make some excuse to get out of it. No, uh, of course I wouldn't. I'd love to go. I mean, if it was any other day but Monday. It, you did say Monday, right? All right, fine. Greg and I will go with you. Won't we, honey? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Wait, th this Monday? <laughs> All right, fine. I'll go with you. It could be one of our mother and daughter-in-law outings. We don't have those. We do now. <laughs> and then next Tuesday night, you'll go with me to interpretive dance night at the Gay and Lesbian Senior Center. <laughs> that would be nice. Good. Great. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Did you say Tuesday? <laughs> okay, I did not see that one coming. <laughs> and while granted all the world's a stage, this little corner of it will also feature comfortable outdoor seating for 375. And so I say, good luck to thee, and may I abide in this land. If I may quote from, and simultaneously audition for, Medea. <laughs> As many what of you What did I know, tell you? I am no Hang on, Kitty, she's building her theater here? Oh, yes, I know. It's, it it's 15 miles from the nearest decent friends. restaurant. <laughs> Kitty, this is Bishop's Meadow. When I was a little girl, we fought to protect this place. From what? It's a swamp. It is a wetland. It's a very specific and irreplaceable ecosystem. Oh, yeah. Probably one of the few places in America that still has monk. And recognizing my passion for the stage, he promised she cannot build her theater here. Dama, please promise me you won't do anything to embarrass me. Kitty, relax. And in the presence of this company and his honor, Judge Porter Manhart III, I hereby 
break ground. Thank you for your discretion, dear. All right, people, settle in. Oh, and if you see bulldozers, lie down. We're so proud of you, Pumpkin, for putting a stop to this. Doesn't it feel good to be out there again protesting as a family? Oh, it's the best. Hey. Hey, honey, this is a surprise. Well, I've been in the neighborhood. Why? Well, I heard that my wife went crazy and threw herself in the path of a rich lady with a shovel. That is their story. What's your story? Same one, but without the word crazy. Now, for what it's worth, Dharma, I support you. And if it'll help, I'll chain myself to her. She's gay. I'm not prejudiced. <laughs> Honey, I know that these issues are very important to you, and I support you, but you've really upset Mrs. Manhart, and she's taking it out on my mother, and there's talk of boycotting my mother's humanitarian of the year dinner, and if that happens, our lives as we know them will be over. Wait, so you're saying that it's okay for me to protest the destruction of the environment as long as it doesn't upset your mother? Oh, I thought I'd dress it up a little so you didn't notice, but yeah, that's the nuts and bolts of it. Honey, I am not going to give this up. Okay, how about this? How about we make a deal that each of us gets one shot during our marriage to veto something that the other person is doing? No. Okay, that's yours. Mine is stop this. I was just saying, we both love the environment. We both love women. My parents didn't have that much in common. Greg, I only have a few minutes. Let's have sex in the shower. Uh-huh, Don, Don, we have, we have company. I was just gonna take a shower to get clean, so come on, Greg, and clean me up. Dama. I, I brought Mrs. Manhart by in the hopes that we can resolve the disagreement about the location of her proposed theater. Oh, great! Did you find a new location? I don't need to find a new location. I own that land you're squatting on. Teensy, teensy. Dama, Mrs. Manhart is a very generous donor to several environmental organizations, such as the, um... Well, the list is just too long. Anyway, she is willing to make a sizable contribution to the cause of your choice if you will simply pack up your tents and perhaps find yourself a, a, a nice oil spill or something. I'm prepared to write you a check for $30,000. Is she trying to bribe me? Mm -hmm. Is it working? No. And frankly, Mrs. Manhart, I'm insulted. Dama, you should be flattered. That's more than a senator goes for. <laughs> Kitty, this has been a very pleasant waste of time. I'm sorry, I thought she would be reasonable. Based on what, Mother? <laughs> Whoa. Don't mind us. We're just here for a strategy session. Dharma, you leave me no choice but to have you and your friends arrested. Oh, my God, that's great! <laughs> And you said it would take a week! <laughs> Mrs. Manhart, are you sure you want to do this? What do you mean? Because I'm sensing you've just played into the Riddler's scheme. <laughs> if they think they can generate publicity with this, they're sadly mistaken. Nobody cares about a handful of rabble-rousers. Yeah? Well, we're not just a handful of rabble-rousers. Sorry, I was just plugging in the car. <laughs> This is actor slash environmentalist Ed Begley Jr. Ed Begley Jr. This is our enemy. How do you do? Nice to meet you. I enjoyed you on St. Elsewhere. Oh, thanks. We had a lot of fun doing that. Hey, guess what? Teetsy's gonna have us arrested. Fantastic. If you think you can get that going quickly, we can make the 11 o'clock news. Oh. Okay, well, I think that's the ball game. Kitty! You said we could win this. Well, how on earth is one to anticipate Ed Bagley Jr.? <laughs> Ed, I can't thank you enough. We've never had anybody back down this fast. It's the celebrity factor. It's not fair, but it works. So, uh, what are your plans? Oh, charge a car, head back home, and take it easy. I cleared a week for this thing. <laughs> whoa, whoa, wait, hold on. There's a lot more stuff going on up here that we could really use you for. All right. Let's go back to your place, sort some recyclables, and make a plan. Larry, Larry, what are you doing? We don't have anything else to protest. We'll find something. That's Ed Begley Jr. He's rechargeable lightning in a bottle. <laughs> okay, it's not the 
that I want to gloat or anything, but what did Mrs. Van Hart say? She agreed to find a conservancy group to buy the land from her. Oh, wow, that's great. But it's kind of hard to gloat when she's being so nice. Well, she also said she hopes a circus train derails nearby and a lion eats every last bit of wildlife in the area. <laughs> Look at me, Greg, I'm gloating. <laughs> so I see. You know what? She'll get over this. All she lost was a theater. The animals are happy. The environment is happy. Ed Bagley Jr. is happy. And you know what? Deep down, I bet your mom is thrilled that Teensy doesn't have a theater with her name on it. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, this whole thing couldn't have worked out better for Kitty if she had planned it. I suppose, but she didn't. Hang on. No. no. <laughs> Let's just go over the facts Oh, here, let's Greg. not. No. She knew that if she brought me out here, I would wreck Teensy's thing. That's why she got me here in the first place. I don't know. Then she brings Teensy over to bribe me, which made her look all innocent in Teensy's eyes. But she knew that I was just going to climb up my butt and sing rock on. I, I don't think she knew that. Come on. Greg, would you just admit that your mother is sneaky and conniving enough to have done something like this? Well, of course, but that doesn't prove anything. She used me. Dharma, please don't confront my mother. No, I'm sorry, Greg. There's a little man on my butt singing See, rock, rock on, on, and your and... mother is going to hear it. I just never thought that you would stoop so low, Kitty. Well, I'm not going to be a pawn in your game. I'm not going to be a puppet on your string, and I'm not going to be your beast of burden. Oh, Dharma, what brings you here? Edward, your, your daughter-in-law is accusing me of engineering a absolutely Machiavellian conspiracy. All right, I'm going to go make myself a sandwich. <laughs> Don't try to deny it, Kitty. I got you on this one. You must think I am just a horrible monster. Well, yes. <laughs> and devious. Very devious. Well, all right, all right. I thank you for your insights, and if you will forgive me, I have some things to take care of. Wait, 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 wait. That's it? Aren't you supposed to deny it, and then I go over the evidence again, and I say, ah, and then you say, drat, and I say, well played, and you say, good show, and then we go have tea or play cricket or something? <laughs> Look, I know that we started our relationship at a great distance from each other, but I have truly... I had truly come to believe that we were becoming friends. Apparently, I was very much mistaken. No, no, we are friends, Kitty. We're just the kind of friends where one of them used one of them and All the other right. One. You know, you can be a very hurtful young lady. Oh, my God. Aha. I'll be right back. Larry, why did you send Ed Begley Jr. out for directions? We know where we're going. Abby, we got a problem. You know that pesticide plant we're going to go picket? Yes. I may have made that up. <laughs> Why? Hey, I called around all morning trying to find something to protest, but it's San Francisco. They're pretty much protested out. Then, Larry, why didn't you just tell him the truth and let him go home? Abby, you don't just let Ed Begley Jr. go home. Why not? Because that's a waste of Ed Begley Jr. <laughs> Guess what? Turns out the freeway is just one block up ahead. Oh, yeah, sure, the green sign. All right. Let's go shut down a pesticide plant. Or something else just as bad. Hi. Hi, honey. Are we, uh, running for student council? <laughs> I'm doing this for your mom's humanitarian of the year thingy tonight, so she'll like me again. Dharma, I know my mother. I'm sure she's not really that upset. Oh, Greg, I was there. I made her cry. Tears? Yes. Huh. So anyway, this morning, I brought her a big I'm sorry balloon bouquet. Yeah, how'd that go over? If you look out the window, you might still be able to see them. So what's the banner all about? Okay. See, you know how Kitty always says they have these humanitarian dinners every year, but nobody ever remembers them? Well, they're going to remember this one. Dharma? Yeah? What did you do? <laughs> The mayor is coming. Mr. Wheelie Brown, the mayor of San Francisco, is coming, plus the editor of the Society page and two other Wheelie Browns that I called before I had the right number. Honey, 
You made a mistake. You said something to Mother that upset her. She'll get over it. You don't have to do this. Yes, I do, honey. I hurt her. And Willie Brown and a banner are going to fix it? Three Willie Browns and a banner, Greg. <laughs> How far is it to this pesticide plant? Just a ways ahead. We'll probably see a line of picketers any minute. You know, we can't just keep driving him around. At some point, this becomes kidnapping. Bingo! Picketers right over there. Where? Over there? That looks like a bunch of high school kids having a car wash. Yeah, okay, I can see how you could go there. Look. I know what's going on. You don't have anything to protest. And you've been driving me around for a couple of hours like some prisoner, hoping that something's gonna fall into your lap. We're, We're sorry, Ed Begley, Begley Jr. Jr. <laughs> it's okay, it happens. Let's go back and see if those punks are using biodegradable soap. <laughs> Mayor, half a dozen photographers, and 200 people out there. How did you do this? Well, your mom's very popular. And everyone loves a chance to win a big screen TV. I know I do. Good, because you're the winner, Mr. Wilkins. All right, just got to fix this thing, and then we're good to go, and your mom's going to love me again. Yeah, just like the good old days. Just let him in. Teensy, you stick with me. I'm going to sit you right next to the mayor. Oh, this certainly is the star-studded evening. Well, I'm sure you'd have the same sort of turnout, should you ever be similarly honored. Oh. 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 I'm fine! I'm fine! I'm totally fine! <laughs> Kitty, perhaps you'd like to have your picture taken in front of the banner. <laughs> So I put out a few feelers, and it turns out there is someone who's willing to put up the money to buy Bishop's Meadow and turn it into a sanctuary. Oh, honey, that's wonderful. That is great news, wow. Pumpkin. Isn't it? So you're all invited Wednesday to the opening ceremony of the K. Montgomery Wetland Preserve. So I'll see you there. Derma, Kitty is donating the land. All right. Look, I ticked Kitty off good, and I tried to make it better, but instead I turned her into the laughing stock of Snooty Town, and now she's making Edward's life miserable, too. So we get Edward to put up the money, named the preserve after Kitty. Everyone thinks she's this great environmentalist. She's blown away. Oh, Dharma. Oh, Kitty. And bing, bing, boom, bop, doo, za. Okay. Dharma, we're not going to let this wildlife preserve be bought with dirty corporate money. Honey, and on a human level, we can't participate in your attempt to purchase Kitty's love. Hang on. Can I say something here? I agree that Dharma's attempt to fix things with her mother-in-law this way is pathetic and desperate. But do the squirrels care? Do the birds care? Does the salamander turn to his mate and say, I feel guilty being alive because Dharma Montgomery bought my safety with her weak and misguided act? I don't think so. Do you? You're right, Ed Begley Jr. All right, Dharma. We'll be there Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ed, will you be around Wednesday? Wednesday, absolutely. Wait, this Wednesday? <laughs> it is my great honor to present to the world the culmination of a project that I have long supported. <laughs> the Kitty Montgomery Wetlands Preserve. Well, you did it. She looks pretty happy. Yep. And she's got her name on Teensy Swamp. <laughs> Worked out perfectly for her. She got me again, didn't she? No. Oh, she got no, me No, she again. didn't. Wait, I... you said this worked out perfectly for no, her. No, I didn't. I sneezed. <laughs> oh, I would also like to add that none of this would have been possible without someone who sees me as I truly am. 
my daughter-in-law, Dama. Please. Yes. Yay. Dharma, let it, let it go. Let's move on. Are you comforting me or holding me back? <clears throat> Little of both. <laughs>